with the shooting of Congress lady Gabriella Giffords and other recent situations, everybody is realizing that mental illness is now a serious problem. And many are suggesting that perhaps we need to invoke the involuntary in, in, uh, commitment to mental institutions of individuals who friends, family, co-workers, employers, school officials consider to be a threat to themselves and others. And um, I think that this is, is unfortunate because malicious people and people with access to grind and uh, who are vindictive will put some innocent people in mental institutions. Um, if I could mention myself, I remember when Florida was trying to take away my child, you had the um, workers at the Jewish Family Center in Jacksonville telling my girl to call me in the authorities and get me incarcerated for mental illness. And, and I don't have any mental problems. But if she had made that call, they would have come and take me in and then put me on medication and ensure that I stay in there for the rest of my life, which is evil. So, um, we have evil and mental illness interacting and coinciding to create the serious problems we do. Because I know many people that might have deficient mental capacity, but they don't have to go out or they don't go out and kill. But when they're evil, even if their capacity is not diminished and they're normal, they will kill. So that what makes an assassin is because probably he's evil and also uh, mentally ill or primarily primarily evil. Look, for example, this psychologist guy here, um, Stephen Bloomfield, he uh, wanted to get me into mental health care. So what he did, I give him my uh, college degrees and my resume. He says that he can't verify my work experience, nor can he verify my education. But he, he had to call. I mean, my work experience, I wasn't claiming anything big. I was just a, a factory manager I work. Uh, grocery store manager, a dairy manager, from a store right in Jacksonville. He could have verified that. And my education had nine degrees then, two doctorates, three bachelors, two associates, and two masters. He could have called the schools and verified, but no, he just wants to give Judge Gooden and the Department of Children of Families and the FBI reasons to have me uh, committed. So he recommended that I go to, for long-term counseling at a therapist. She wants me to say that I have a mental problem so that they could put me in this, uh, oh, um, she, eventually she, she uh, sort of um, violated me and sent me back to the court saying that I am delusional and I will do well to go to uh, see a psychiatrist and replace the medications. Um, and so this judge good in here. He basically um, discriminates a lot. In fact, he said that he wanted to have this same psychologist to come and, and testify before him about violence and kids, how violence affects kids and all them stupid alike. I mean, you know, it's like they want to take away a child and they will come with all kinds of things. In fact, they'll even create situations in your home where they could construe it as violence so they could do you what they want to do. But I think this is an unfortunate path they're taking, however. So why then we see this in upsurge in mental illness? Well, um, mental illness is big bucks. First of all, uh, Reagan closed down the mental institutions because it was cheaper to have them living at home and just giving them a fraction of what it would cost per year to keep them in an institution. For example, it might be $100,000 a year to care for one person in a mental institution. So they give them a $5,000 check or $6,000 check, $12,000 check for the year and say, bye, and, and that's supposed to take care of it. So many of them are on the street, and then they involve in evil. Uh, others are into uh, Stephen King books, they're into horror movies, they're into all kinds of forms of evil, and they become dangerous. Also, if one is lazy and one does not want to work, just go to a psychologist like this one here and say that, oh, I'm crazy. And they'll say, okay, and the fellow begins to operate stupid, jump on his desk, behaving be, uh, as if he's a frog, and he'll give him a recommendation, he'll go and qualify for a social security check, or SSI. Social Security income check. Then you have mental ill people who are in Hollywood. You find um, uh, Charlie Sheen flips off easy, behaves crazy, and he gets a big check. We have Snooki out in New Jersey. She starts a fight and starts going on crazy, and she's a celebrity. 
So uh, being crazy has celebrity status. So you could either be a criminal or you could be a celebrity if you're mentally ill. And um, also, mental illness is in fashion. For example, the person who started to wear his pants down uh, a long time ago was a, a, a nutcase. So others seem to like it and they're just walking around with the pants down holding it up. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. But it's, it's fashionable. So when you see some fellas walking across the street holding the pants and the pants sagging down and everybody watching them is like, damn, <laughs> you know, I'd like to be like them. So what else do you expect? So if we really, really want to change this thing, and then as I said in another video, that many of these health professionals are also crazy because they went into the area so as to um, learn how to handle their own mental problems. And then they see, oops, I could make a check on it too. And psychology has come to the place now where it's just a bunch of old wife's tales, the projecting the worst case scenario on you. For example, this psychologist here, Dr. Bloomfield. I um, told him that I've never used any drug, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no nothing. I just use vitamins. And he ridiculed it. It's like, he think I believe him. So, okay. So why you don't, I can't believe that I've never used any drugs? Because I'm black. Or oh, I'm supposed to be some drug. This judge, basically, Judge Gooden, he presided over my dependency here in case. And he's so bogus and so out of it that I just don't understand. When he was campaigning to be the judge, he violated the canons. He had financial shenanigans. He lied about his opponent and something else he did. And instead of the Judicial Commission uh, throw him out, they said, okay, let the High Court, the Supreme Court, send you him. And they called him up there and gave him some talk and he's back in. But you see, he's the right guy to put in a position where you have to have no conscience and violating the law and taking people's kids away even though there is no guilt. People haven't done anything wrong. In fact, the law that he used to take my child, he misquoted because my girl, she likes to wrestle around. And he used that as uh, evidence of domestic violence. When the, 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 the law of the domestic violence talking about breaking bones and, and shooting, and in other, in other words, something that could harm the child. But there was none of that. And the attorneys, they sit down, the, the public defenders, they can't even do nothing because they're afraid of him. And then he recommended one of his friends to do the appeal. And instead of she get done with issues, she just get on on trying to say, sad budge of stupidness. Um, I tried to get her off the case, but you know, they didn't want to. And as long as he started off like that, then it's done. Because he got the department chair and family attorney to write his opinion. He's so lazy. And she wrote it impeccably. In other words, she talked about preponderance of evidence and uh, clear and convincing evidence. And there was nothing of that. But when the other court sees that in your opinion, you're done. You're lost. So this judge and this psychology, these are people that are causing the problems. Because my girl, she has more mental problems. She has mental problems. I don't. But he discriminated against me and uh, validated what she has said. So it's men like him who, with psychologists like this, causing this mental ill people out there to do a whole bunch of damage to the community.